Welcome to my video on futures market hedging for the seller. Now in this video, we're gonna go over some important terms and we're gonna work through an example hedge, again, as a seller would use in the market. Now I've got this corn production that I'm, that I'm managing. I put 50,000 bushels in the bin. So that is our example. We're going to learn about how a hedger would manage the risk of this corn they have in a bin that they're gonna sell later. Now be an active learner, take notes along the way. Again, I'm going over some important terms and laying out how this hedge would work for a seller. So to be an active learner and take notes. All right, let's get started. I've got this corn crop I produced. 50,000 bushels is in my little bin here, if that makes sense, that's what that is. 50,000 bushels are in here. And I have got to better understand in this corn what my time period is. So let's lay that out. Today, I am gonna act like is December of 2019. And this corn that I have in my bin is going to be sold, or I'd like to sell it, in April, and I'm looking at 2020. So that's kind of my window of time here. What is my risk as a seller of corn during this time? It's that price would fall. So that's my concern, And but today's December, and for whatever reason, I've got this corn in storage. And you may say to yourself, why not just sell it right now if the price is good? Well, maybe this corn is actually under a loan. I've borrowed money on this corn. And so I can't really sell the corn yet until I get the loan paid back. And I've got some other business work I'm doing. It could be for lots of reasons. I'm using December and the corn's in a bin. You could have this corn grown in a field and the concept would work just the same. But I'm looking at December 19 being right now, corn's in the bin, and I can't get it sold until somewhere in April. So that's kind of our scenario, and that's where we want to look at how does a seller manage this priced risk using the futures market. All right, so let's move our corn out of here, and let's bring in the situation today in December. We're looking at the market right now in December, and the futures graph, you can see an area I've got blocked out. That is because that is what happened after December. But we don't know. You have to imagine you're looking at that graph and you see the price of corn has gone up. And then you see the price of corn has gone back down again. It's gone back up a little bit. And right at 394 in the futures, you decide maybe I need to go ahead and get rid of my price risk and hedge, which is what we're looking at today. Something else you look at, this is the futures market, but remember the definition of a hedger is involved in how many markets? Right down in your notes, they are involved in two markets. So to hedge, we need to write down those two markets. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a table. You do the same along with me. You need kind of four columns. You need one column that represents time. Then you need another column that represents the cash market that we are involved in. But remember, a hedger's involved in two markets, so I'm gonna draw a line between the next one and the next market that I'm involved in is the futures market. And then finally, the last column is gonna be a new term, and that is called basis. I'm gonna put a box around that because that's an important term. So this term basis, we'll get to in a second. But this is the table you need to lay out. Let's start off with December. That is the day I'm looking at making my decision. And in December, the futures market right now, this is a May contract. And that's because if you keep going down in our little table here, in April, we are going to actually, I'll change colors here. In April, that is when we actually will sell. So that's kind of what we're trying to get done in April. So there's your time span. December today, all the way till April. And of course, the price risk is you're worried about price going which way? That's down. Because I'm a seller, I'd like prices high. If the price drops, that's my problem. So there's our first column of our table. The second column of our table is the cash market. Well, this is the futures market right now. May contracts at 394. I actually looked up also, and at the same time in December, Amarillo is our cash price. That's our area of Texas we're looking at, but it could be any area of the U.S. where you look at cash price. But Amarillo had a cash price in December of $3.90 a bushel. 
So the market's at 390. The futures price is obviously kind of high. And as a seller, we would like to say, you know what? I'd like to, I'd like to lock in that price. I would like to try to hold on to and protect my cash price. So this beginning cash price, if you're going to hedge, becomes something we're going to call, I'll move this up here, called the lock-in. Why would I be there? Lock-in price. That's a very important term we want to grab a hold of. The beginning cash price is where the futures hedger says, that's my lock-in. So there's a term for you. All right, let's look at the futures market. That's not Amarillo. This is Amarillo. This is not Amarillo. This is the CME group. This is Chicago market. This is a worldwide market people are trading in. And right now, the May contract, and you got to put the month because that is the contract. It's trading for $3.94. Uh, That's the value of that contract. All right, this brings us to another one of our terms, and that is basis. Basis is cash minus a futures price. That is what the basis is. So 390 minus 394 is a negative four cent basis. And that's another term hopefully you'll follow. All right, so this is the beginning situation. I'm in December. Cash price in Amarillo is $3.90. I look at that and I say, wow, I really would like to have that as my price. So to do that, you look at the futures market. You find out that trading right now for $3.94. And so that gives you a basis of $0.04 cents right now, the difference between these two. And that's kind of what we know. Now the next is, is to call our broker up. I've got 50,000 bushels of corn. A corn contract is 5,000 bushels. So I call my broker up and say, I want to protect my bushels of corn. I need to trade 10 contracts. That's 10 times 5,000 will get to my 50,000. That's how many contracts I need to trade. Now the question is, what position do you take? Well, your broker is going to say, if you're trying to protect this cash price, what would make you money if the price fell in the futures market? And that would be to take a sell position on a contract. Now, a sell in the futures market is going to allow me to sell at a high price. If the price falls, I can then put in a buy position on the same contract and I would be out. Anytime you sell something that you also buy, you're done. Or if you buy something and you later sell it, you're also done. So a sell position here for me automatically means I'm going to take a buy later. Well, here's another term for you. A sell position is called a short position. That's just a term. Sell means short. So we have quite a few terms that we're introducing here while we work our way through. But now I have my time, December to April. My worry is price going down. I have a 390 price I really like. Call my broker up, look at a May contract trading at 394 based on the market at the time, and I take a sell position on 10 contracts that cover this whole set of 50,000 bushels that I have. All right, so that starts the hedge for me. I'm short in the market. There's where that term comes into play. And now we let time tick by. Let's move out this market and let's bring back what happened. Well, you can see in our graph here for the futures market. Also, let's bring in the cash market right now in April. And at Amarillo, our price now moved over here. You can look, there's a range here. It's 329, a range to 349. But actually, we managed to negotiate $3.39 in the cash market in Amarillo. That is actually when we sell that commodity. So I'm going to draw a line underneath here to help me bring down all these numbers. Well, what happened to us in the cash? So we'll get to futures in a second. Here's the result of the futures. But you can see that the cash market in Amarillo dropped from 390 to 339. Looks like that's a move of a loss of 51 cents a bushel. So that's, I'm going to put a loss underneath here to help. That's not so good. I looked at 390 and said, boy, if I were ready in December, I could have probably got that 390 price. But instead, I had to wait. 399, 339 is what I got. That's a 51 cent loss. Kind of a bummer. However, that was the point of a hedge. I'm involved in two markets. What happened over here? Well, the May contract, as you can see in our graph, 
changed as well. That May contract fell and it fell to a price of 340. So that contract is now worth 340. Remember, these futures market is a clearinghouse of buyers and sellers from all over the world coming into this market. Lots of buyers, lots of sellers. Obviously, if that price fell, May contract back in December was worth 394. Now that May, that's not the month of May, that's a May contract. That May contract fell. That means there was a lot of people trying to sell. They kept selling like us. And that drove that market down. Not many people wanting to buy. But when we finally get down to this position, we are going to actually be one of those that does take a buy on that contract. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, it means we were able to sell something at 394. So we were kind of obligated, right? We were a seller. We're obligated to the futures market to deliver corn at 394 but we're not gonna show up in Chicago. The futures market does not take commodities. They are buying and selling contracts. So I come back in and I buy that same 10 sets of contracts for 340. That shows me to actually be able to make, what is that, 54 cents in profit. And so this and this have offset each other and that is the value of a hedge. They try to offset each other. And in fact, the basis helps me see what's going to happen because 339 minus 340, that is a penny basis. So if you look across this window of the basis, the change in basis is what we want to focus on. That's another term. How do you calculate change in basis? Well, it was four cents. Now it's one cent. So the basis changed by how much? Three cents. Now, a lot of people like to look at plus and minus. Really, the value is what did the basis change by? So put a box around that. That's a term you need to know how to calculate, and that's how you calculate it. The basis was four cents. Now the basis is one cent. It changed by three cents. All right. Watch your negatives here because that can maybe change how you add this up, but the difference is three cents there. Easy to see. This same basis change, you have a check because the change of the cash and the change of the futures ought to also equal that basis. So that's kind of a check for you. All right, so that is the hedge. We have a situation where we lost in the cash. A hedge means you set yourself up to gain in the futures, and that's exactly what we did. These positions are important to make sure you get right. Now, you may say, hold on a minute, I thought the definition of a hedge was the opposite in the futures than the cash. Well, that's exactly what we have. While we're selling our corn in the cash market, that same exact time we're buying our way out of that futures contract. Those two are the opposite. This is where you see the opposite position is at the very end. All right, so that's the setup of a hedge. It's a four column table where you put time, you put cash, you put futures prices and the changes, and then you calculate basis. And then you're able to look in this whole situation. There's our lock-in. So the last thing for us to do in our problem is, well, what is the net result? I like to say it's called net price. What is the net price here? of this corn that we got to do here. We we're trying to get rid of this stuff in April and we did, but you're involved now, remember in two markets, that's important. What did the first market, what did we sell our corn actually for? Well, go over and review this. There's what we really sold our corn for. So this is gonna be the cash price of 3.39 from the futures market. I mean the cash market, sorry. But now what did we have in the futures market? Well, we had a profit. I'm going to put here profit. And our profit was a price of 54 cents a bushel. And so when you add these up, you're looking at a price of, what would that be? $3.93 per bushel. And so this per bushel price is what our net is. Now, how do you make sure this is right? Well, a couple of ways. One is we take this net price and it is going to be related to our cash price that we have in the market that we tried to lock in. That was the first part. But that lock-in is going to be 
fact explained by how much your basis changed by. So we tried to lock in 390. We actually got 393. The basis changed by three. So that helps explain how they're different. And you can also see it here. This market hurt us by 51 cents. This market helped us by 54. We're going to be three cents better off. This futures market and the cash market, these two markets that I'm in, they help me offset each other. And that is the value of a hedge. And this is how you would set it up if you were talking about the seller hedge, the selling hedge for the futures market and cash market. Make sure that you go over the questions I have. They connect to all of these I've moved over here. And remember, it's really two areas. It's some new terms that we learned about. And then it's also setting up this table to be able to answer these questions. Hopefully this helps you see how you address the hedging examples for a seller. Thanks.